Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to, I believe this is part four of the uh, series for creating a full set of as-built plans, okay? Uh, we got a couple more things we got to do on this floor plan. I think this video is going to be about finishing the walls. We got a couple more walls we have to put in, um, finishing the labels, the room labels, uh, and doors and windows, and then we'll see where we're at at that point, okay? So the first thing I wanted to draw attention to is... We were looking at the kitchen. We put those numbers in. Um, a quick thing here, we should really put the ceiling height above all of these room labels. So if this ceiling height, which it's all going to be the same text, let's just say I went out to the house and the ceiling height was 8 feet. Okay, so we're just going to put 8 feet 0 inches. All right, so ceiling height 8 feet 0. So now I can just control, you know, select it, control C, control V. For copy and paste whoops I'll fix that one in a second and this is only for the rooms not for the closets and that's important to note because there are sometimes rooms that have different ceiling heights like a vaulted ceiling or maybe there's a you know a, a double story uh, large living room or something like that all right we've got that this is going to be called the living room, all caps. Um, let's see, did we do the measurements? So I want to finish these walls first. We still have these boxes over here. I think these are all done. I think that's all done. Maybe let's clean up this a little bit. Sometimes if the text doesn't fit very well, like this is fine, but if it, if it wasn't really fitting that well, like let's say the bathroom, I will take that number, click on it, right click properties, and I'll just change the text height to be a little bit smaller, like 5 inches or something like that. But in this case, I think it's fine and it doesn't need to be changed. Um, Alright, so this one. Let's fix this. And I don't want to measure these rooms yet because we don't have the walls quite there yet. So I probably shouldn't have done this one just yet. Alright, so walls. So pick a wall that you already have. Add selected. We're going to go... Actually, we're going to take this one and we're just going to extend this straight through. All right, so now we can get rid of the box that's behind there. Um, if it's behind your wall, remember that you can hover over where you think it is and then do control space, and that's going to allow you to line cycle behind. Um, all right, more walls. Click on a wall that you have. Add selected. Maybe we'll go here. Maybe we'll go up. Maybe we will take this one and extend it. Sometimes you got to do the second one like that. All right. And select another wall. Add selected. This one's going to go down the middle here. Hold, uh, hit shift to change your justification. That's going to go right down the center. We can now erase the box from the utility room. And yeah, we could get rid of the bath one too. And then we got two more walls here. So add selected. You're going to put one shift twice you're gonna put one there always hit escape twice when you're doing add selected and I'll explain why right now when I click on a wall and hit add selected and then I draw a wall and I hit escape it still has the initial wall selected so you don't want to accidentally go into your next command like let's say I'm moving you know the text or something it's gonna think I want to move that wall because it's still selected so get in the habit of always hitting escape twice. I hit escape twice on actually everything just because I want to make sure that I hit the key clean. All right, so add selected. We'll put this last wall in. Uh, we'll stretch this one all the way through. We'll stretch that one all the way through. Whoops. We can now get rid of the box there and the box... Let's see, we're going to do a line cycle, so shift space, click, delete. So the closet's all good. This is going to get extended through. This one gets extended through. They should all be open corners um, and open intersections. And I think that's it. So now we got ceiling height 8 foot, utility room, ceiling 8 foot. So now let's just double check our measurements and make sure that they were correct. 
regular dimension tool, five feet by seven feet, eight and a half, good. Five feet, one half inch. I, I, I kind of want to just make those rooms the same size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up here with a click and bring that green box down on this wall. And I'm going to do S enter for stretch. I'm going to click anywhere and move my cursor to the left and I'm going to stretch that in by a half inch. So now that room is going to be five feet and it should be the same height, seven feet, eight and one half. Let's get rid of that one. Control C, Control V and we're good. Dining room. All right, let's check measurements over here. So from here to there, we're getting 14 feet, five and a half wide. Five and one half inch wide. And then the height is interesting because I think with the kitchen, we went from here to here. So we're going to go from like there to there, eight feet, three and a half, but it's much more open than that. It sounds like a small number, but everything is wide open. Eight feet, I, I want to say it was three and one half inch. Um, another thing I want to mention is that, oh, also you can take this, stretch that out a little bit, and then just try to center it with the move tool. All right. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is that when you dimension and you get a number, see how it says seven feet minus, well, you know what? Let's, let's go a little longer. Hang on. All right. It says eight feet minus sign three and one half inch sign. Okay. But that's not the same as what the, the correct way to type that is and the correct way to type that in the command line. So some of my students will do like a move or something and they'll type the wrong formula. It's not eight feet minus sign three one half because that would be confused three one half would be confused for 31 over two. It's it's so the dimensions are actually wrong. I don't know why it shows like that. It's it's incorrect, but it should be eight feet three and which is the minus sign one half inch. OK, you don't even need the inch sign at the end. All right. So I just wanted to clear that up. And then the living room. Fifteen feet five. By 16 feet. All right, so all the walls are done, all the room labels are done. Okay, we got our closets labeled. Now we're gonna do doors and windows. I don't really need this stuff anymore. All right, here we go. So um, this is all gonna be random numbers, but if, if you were doing your as built and you wrote it down on, the, on your piece of paper, it said, oh, from the exterior wall, I'll take a line, I'll slide, I'll click. Maybe it was six feet three to the center of that window. So I'll draw this one across, okay? And I'm gonna steal another window here, but you could also go to the window tool, uh, make sure that you're just on standard, change the size of the window. You measured the window in the as-built, uh, you know, when you were out there measuring. So put in what that is, two feet two by four feet six or whatever it is. Um, I'm gonna stay very basic for all my windows. I'm gonna do all the same size, but only because this house doesn't exist and there's no reason to change all those numbers. It, I don't think it gives us any educational value. Okay. Also, sorry that I haven't done a video in like seven days, but I've been uh, very sick and now I'm finally feeling better. I'm still a little congested, but I'm all good. Um, and it's easier to shoot videos when you feel good. <laughs> um, okay. So I'm going to do an add select on one of my windows. So I'm going to click a window, add select. It's already three feet by five feet. I'm going to click it on this wall. This one here has to be flipped out. That way the window sill is facing out and then I'm going to move it from the midpoint of the window to my line that I drew. And now these two lines are very easy to erase. Okay. I'm just going to go around and do that over and over again. So slide, click, you can go out and then let's say, oh, I'm sorry. I did that wrong. We're going to slide this way, click, and you're going to go, let's say this one was uh, four feet, 10 to the center of the window. Okay. Take the window you already have. Add select, put it on that wall, window sill facing out, move from the midpoint over to this line. Don't forget to hit escape twice. Um, okay, so yeah, let's, uh, all right, we'll do, 
There's not going to end up being a, a window in the utility. We'll do one in the bathroom. That one would most certainly be a smaller size. Um, again, I'm just going to do the same size here, but it would most likely be like a two-foot window. They're always smaller in the bathroom. So let's flip that out. Move. Midpoint. Um, I don't have a line drawn there, but if it was centered in the bathroom, I would go like this. I would, I would take a line, slide down, draw across, and get that right there. And then I would draw this midpoint up. And now this is centered in the bathroom. Okay, and that's probably where the tub is right there. Okay, and we're going to talk about that in a second. I think we're going to go into the bathroom next uh, and the utility room. Um, so as far as windows go, I'm not going to show the rest of those. I don't know if there's any value to that either because you guys could just go in and put windows anywhere you want. You could do a double window here, double window there. I like to do double windows in the bigger rooms, so you just have two of them. So it would look something like this. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you would grab this point of the actual windowsill and you put it on the other one because there's always going to be a 2x4 between those two windows and that's what it would look like. Okay. So yeah, I'll just leave that a double window. Um, but I would do two double windows here. I would do single window, single, uh, no window in the closet, sorry. Single, single, no windows in the office, obviously, but you know, you've got the, the door and that's going to be the only opening in there. Um, I would do some nice windows here. You could even put a triple window and a triple window. And then this might even be like a quadruple window. This could be windows all the way around. You know, this, this would be a pretty nice room if it had windows all over the place because natural lighting is always key. Okay. So I'll let you guys go forward with that. Now, as far as doors go, I have a three foot six, eight door here. The six, eight is the height. Three feet zero is how wide it is from opening to opening. I'm going to do an add selected. That's going to be basically my front door. Although this could most likely be a double door. So I'm doing mirror, MI enter, and I'm going to mirror it over this point. And then I'm going to hit, uh, do you want to erase the source? No. And these also need to face out. So we're going to flip them the other way. And I don't like how that sill looks. I want to see if maybe I can go in here and change the type of door to be a interior, nope, not interior double sliding. We want to be double, double sliding, double pocket, double bifold, double hinged. Yeah, that could work, but it doesn't have the sill. Double hinged, half round. Nope. So I'd probably just go with the double hinged, even though it doesn't have the sill. You could always draw that in, but I'm going to change the size to be a six foot because it's two of them. Okay. So now let's just pretend that this is, oh, this wall has got to go through. Let's pretend that this is an offset of, let's say, six. And that's that we're going to move from this corner to here. Get rid of the lines. Okay. So you see, the way I do my lines, you know, you could totally do them like this and just go six over. But you can't see where that line is. And that drives me crazy because you don't want to have all these extra lines when you're done. Okay, so that's a double door. Get rid of this one. All right. <clears throat> all right, let's grab another three-foot door. Add selected. Or you could, again, just go to door. Make sure it's on standard door. Three-foot. Make this six-eight. Um, I'm doing a three-foot door for the master bedroom. So I'm going to grab that same door I was just on. Add select for me. And that's going to be right in here. Now, I don't know what size this is. I want to say it's like four feet. Yes. So in the middle of that wall, I'm going to slide, click, go out 24 inches or two feet. Now, this is a little bit more difficult um, with doing the door. With the door, I'm going to move this just off that line a little bit. With the door, what you want to do is you want to put a line from opening to opening. And now you select the door and that line and you move it from the midpoint of that line that you drew to your intersection line and then now you have three lines to erase for the doors because you want to get them centered okay um, that will swing into the room and most likely go up against a wall so that would make sense just like this okay um, closets okay you can have different closet doors we have sliding closet doors which could be in the bedrooms add selected I think this is a four foot closet door and that could go 
hit escape twice. That could go in here. Now, I don't see enough space on both sides to have this closet door, or at least have this size. So I'm going to back this down to be 3 foot 6. And then I'm going to do a line from this midpoint out. I'm going to take this door. The midpoint of it is probably in here. So we got to do the same thing with that. We got to take a line from opening to opening. See if we can get an intersection and slide. And then grab the door and move that from the midpoint of the line you drew to the intersection line. One, two lines to erase. And what happened to the rest of our wall here? If that was in the center, that does not work. That doesn't look right. Let's try this again. Midpoint. I think that was going into the wall, and that's why it was like that. So let's try this one more time. Door and line move the midpoint to intersection. That makes more sense. Now, also, we need to double check. Oh, by the way, this is going to be however you want it to be. And if you want to open them away from the entrance to the room, I think that makes more sense because this is the side that you would most likely open more often. Um, we also want to check that this is at least three, okay? Um, three and a half is better because that's going to be a two by four there or a two two by fours, but three is okay. If you don't like that, then back the size down a little bit more and you do three feet. And that should stay, it should have stayed centered, but you'd have to move it again at that point, which I'm not going to do, okay? Uh, the closet door out here, this is probably going to be a regular door. So let's grab this one, add selected. We're going to put that right here. We're going to make that fold out. And we're going to change that number to be something smaller. Um, I would normally measure this first. So, okay, we've got two feet, two and a half. That's 26 and a half inches. We need at least, I, I like to leave at least four inches on both sides. So take away four inches from 26 and a half. You're at 22 and a half and then 18 and a half. So if you make an 18 inch door, which I did, that was a good guess. Um, You're going to want to put one side being four inches and one side being like three and a half or whatever it is. So we'll do the four inches on this side. Uh, slide, click, four. See, it's just a little bit off. That was a bad guess there. Erase the two lines. Okay, so we get something like that. All right, so when these doors are closed, that can open. Uh, when this one's closed, those can open. Okay, it's not ideal to have it right behind a, a wall, but this is just the way I set it up. You could flip these and have this one be here in the room and have that one be out there. That might actually make more sense. And, and looking at it now, I probably would do that. Um, but I don't need to show that because you guys understand how that would go. It would just be basically moving this wall right here. Okay. And flopping the doors. <coughs> okay. Um, I'm not going to do any more doors. You guys understand the idea behind that. Um, but I do want to take a door label. Okay. Which is going to be one of these copy and paste it and put it next to the door and tell me what size it is if it's three feet it's gonna say three zero six eight if it's I'm gonna I'm gonna mirror this one or uh, I'm gonna rotate it if it's a six foot opening this is gonna say three zero six eight times two because there are two of them now, if you had a specific door, you're looking at Anderson's catalog or you're looking on the internet at Home Depot and you know that it's called a, you know, um, what's the name of that one really nice door? Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. But if you know what it is and what model number it is, then you can put that number here instead of putting 3068 because that number is understood that that is what that model number is. Okay, so we do something like that and you just keep moving that stuff around, you know, copy and paste. And you want to do it soon after you do the doors because, again, this one's 18 inches, but it's going to be 1 foot 6. And I like to make those numbers smaller for the, for the inches. So this one, text height might be, let's see where properties is. Properties. All right, so the text height of this might be text frame. Where's text height? 5 inches. But this one might be four, okay? 
This one is going to get changed to 1668. It's not going to be times two. There's only one of them. Um, for this one, I'd put like, we did, I think, three feet six. So you would do uh, three, six, six, eight, and then I would put sliding. That way you know there are sliding doors. This one, I'm going to also rotate. And if you just click anywhere and go straight up or straight over, hmm, straight down, sorry. That's going to flip it so that it matches where the door is. And that one's going to go right there, okay? So we don't need to do any more doors, okay? All right, bathrooms. Um, there is a file that I put up a long time ago underneath, like, the ranch plans and elevations. If you could get that plan, that's this one. You could copy over some of my symbols here, or you can make them on your own. It's up to you. There's also a video that I did about how to make your own symbols. Um, that was when I was doing the electrical plan of one of these houses. I can't remember which one. Okay, so one two three these just have to be generic you know they just got to look like what they are copy and paste i'll put those out here this one is going to get rotated something about plumbing is you want to make sure that you don't have any plumbing on the exterior walls so in this case if the shower head was this way then the plumbing would be in this wall uh, you would not want to have, if this was the other way, like this, you wouldn't want the shower head to be on the top part of that because that's where all the plumbing would be. And one issue would be the window and the other issue would be that you have your plumbing on an exterior wall. Those lines will most certainly freeze in the winter months and that's why you don't want to do that. Oh, I should go forward. Oh, I messed up. Okay. Rotate again whoops rotate so let's say the tub was there okay now let's say that the sink it should be the first thing that you see when you walk in the room Oop! I grabbed it from the wrong corner it should go sink tub toilet that's gonna go there now I can already tell that this room is gonna be too small for this bathroom um, this seven feet eight we need to be bigger than that because we either need to be bigger or we need to move this wall into the utility room and maybe move this one out I got to think about that as I'm going but again this is a house that you measured so you you don't have to worry about any of these problems because it's something that you already measured and that house already exists this what I'm doing is more of a design because I don't know what the size of this house is it's made up okay um, so what are we going to do? Let's do a dim linear on the hallway and see how wide that is. That's three feet five. I could scale that down to be three feet by moving this five inches. And then I can do extend. Hopefully some of these will probably work. I guess not. Okay. Drag those through. This closet just got a little bit bigger, which is fine. Okay, so we got a three-foot hallway to get to the kids' room and a three-foot hallway to get to the office and to the bathroom. That's fine. Um, that moves this. Let's see if we have enough room now. You need to have one foot four from your tub. Sorry, I'm going to slide. Click. One foot four to the center of the bowl. And one foot four off of your sink to the center of the bowl. This is very close, and that's why I would probably say it's all good. Um, so I'm going to go like this, actually. I'm going to put a diagonal. It looks like it would be about one foot three and a half. It's very close. You're also going to measure some homes that don't even have the one foot four. Okay. So this one I'm going to accept and I'm going to take this because I didn't want to move into this anyways because we, we would take away from the dining room. Um, but also we could move the wall of the office and we could take some size out of there and get this hallway moved a little bit and, and stretch that just another half inch, which maybe is something that you might want to do. Otherwise, we're taking this, we're moving it from the midpoint on the back, and we're putting that on this line, and then erasing, and boom, bathroom's done. Just got to do the door, window's already done. Okay, now, this is a perfect example. This text is all too big. So I'm going to take this and this, I'm going to right-click and go to Properties, I'm going to go to Text Site, and I'm going to make that three. All right, so that stuff will fit a little bit better. I'm going to move that stuff like that. Now, bath one, seven inches. Let's make that five, and let's just move that out of the way. 
something like that okay all right so that's all done so you guys know doors you know windows you know how to do a bathroom um, in here okay washer and dryer you have we have this symbol that we use for washer and dryer I'm gonna steal this text too. control C control V and let's just say that these are not stackable maybe this is just the washer you'll have the two inch part facing the wall now where do we want the plumbing let's think about that this is probably gonna be on this wall because you got plumbing for the shower plumbing for the toilet plumbing for the sink you could easily put a water line right here so I actually rotated that the wrong way I gotta start wrapping this video up I got kids coming in, in a few minutes um, I didn't rotate that enough <clears throat> okay and I grabbed it from the wrong corner sorry I'm not fully thinking today now you wanna leave at least four inches behind which you gotta see what that's gonna do to the door here you may have to move this anyways uh, four inches behind for all the you know uh, hoses and things like that um, you wanna leave at least two inches off the wall and then you're gonna copy this one and you're gonna go up and you're gonna leave at least two inches between okay these could also maybe we want to not have that issue with the what with the wall there so we're gonna go up here it's starting to get a little confusing I'm sorry two so that that works too okay and then maybe in this corner is your furnace which I usually just draw a box you know something like this we will go let's just say it's 20 by 20 and you know maybe I should move this back into the corner and then just go two inches off the wall two inches off the wall now a hot water heater is not gonna fit in this room so I'm thinking then that this is a stackable unit and I'm thinking that text is probably gonna have to get smaller so I'm gonna do a match properties click on bath one click on utility and that's gonna size that down match properties click on this text click on this click on that so that stuff is fine now probably center it a little bit it looks kinda ugly this room is small enough where we need to probably have the stackable going and there's obviously no closet in there but now you know this could go anywhere you just gotta leave a couple inches behind and let's just say that this is a diameter or a radius of 10 and then on there you're gonna put a little label one of them is gonna say furnace double click to get into that text box the other one is gonna say hot water heater It's pretty tight let's do match properties select all right something like that and let's move these up up and out all right so that's done too so I mean this stuff is is pretty easy at that point you know the master closet there's nothing to put in there um, you know you just you have the label and you have the doors maybe this is a double door too maybe it's maybe it's a double two foot six door or something like that <clears throat> master bath you know maybe I don't know maybe now I'm thinking this should be bigger you know maybe we should take this wall and we should move this wall even with this one and that's gonna give you a lot more space to walk into your closet and it's gonna give you a lot more space to maybe put you know a stand-up shower and a hot tub or something like that you know I'm not really sure but I I kinda like that but again this is just a home that is just made up so that's why there's you know it's there's so many question marks okay so that's it for this video um, I believe that was part four and in the next one we're probably gonna go into starting to do the wall section that way later we can do the elevations okay so or maybe we will talk about decks and stuff too maybe we should 
put a little deck on the back and a porch on the front. Um, but that's pretty much it. I appreciate you guys watching, and I, I think this was a good one. So hopefully this helps you guys out, and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, thanks. Catch them all.